In today's video, we're discussing the possibility of a big goalie trade involving Edmonton and Columbus. We know both goalies involved in this potential deal certainly could benefit from a change of scenery. We'll discuss how things could very well work out. We also have the latest trade talk around the Calgary Flames and the Ottawa Senators. We have a big update as well regarding Val Nishushkin and the Colorado Avalanche. Justin Williams was honored today in Carolina. Plus, we have some other updates from around the NHL regarding some injuries and the Ottawa Senators have a new goalie coach. We'll discuss all that and more coming up next. So welcome back to another video here at Top Shelf Hockey. As I mentioned, we have a lot to cover here today, including a potential big goalie trade that's been rumored that we'll discuss a little bit later on. Uh, first up, Justin Williams, longtime NHL player, Mr. Game 7, as he was nicknamed after all those big-time Game 7 goals in his playoff career. I uh, was honored today in the Carolina Hurricanes game, uh, as they did battle with the Los Angeles Kings. Uh, he was entered into the uh, Carolina Hurricanes Hall of Fame. Uh, he had a heck of a career, was a, a big uh, influence on that organization, of course, uh, and is uh, honored and well, very well deserved. Uh, Justin Williams also appeared with a few other teams, but I think we'll always, uh, for most part, I think a lot of fans are going to remember him as a Hurricane. Certainly had some great success with the LA Kings as well, which is certainly fitting that they were in town uh, for this game today when they chose to honor him today. So certainly nice to see them take some time to uh, recognize and acknowledge one of their greats, uh, and certainly a well deserved honor now as i mentioned we have some other injury updates around the nhl uh, chicago today was confirmed and seen on video that Connor bedard resumes skating today uh, i think that kind of goes without saying and he's been chomping at the bit pretty well the last few days to get on the ice i don't think the team was overly uh excited about it because he just had jaw surgery a few days ago i think they probably would have preferred he stay off the ice for a little bit longer but uh, he wasn't taking no for an answer, so they figured out a way to modify the plans so that he could safely get some skating in. Um, they made a rule with him that he's not allowed to take any slap shots. And I know uh, head coach Luke Richardson was joking with the media saying that if he sees him taking any slap shots, that he's going to yank him off the ice and he won't be allowed back on. But uh, we know he's not the type of player who wants to take breaks and wants to uh, you know relax or just heal. So obviously, uh, you know, good dedication, but sometimes you can be your own worst enemy in that sense as well but they said the fact that he's skating won't really change the timeline for his return uh, still going to be a six to eight week prognosis just means that his uh, cardio will be a little bit better than it could have been otherwise but really uh, still going to be lots of healing time before he can play uh, in ottawa today we got the word about josh norris uh, we he was on the ice for the first time he hadn't skated the past couple days he wasn't a no contact jersey though so we don't know exactly what the injury is, this is his upper body. Uh, except after having an awkward fall last week in Calgary, uh, going basically head over heels, um, he left the game and hasn't played since. But he's not considered anything long term. It looks like it's uh, just something short term, and they're considering him day to day. So it's not clear when he's going to play. They're uh, playing the Avalanche tomorrow. I suspect he won't be available for that game where he didn't have uh, regular contact or anything today. But I guess there's optimism he could play maybe sometime within the next week. As I mentioned, the Ottawa Senators today also announced change to their coaching staff again, which is, in my opinion, long, long overdue. Of course, when they made the head coaching change and dismissed DJ Smith, they dismissed a couple of his assistant coaches as well, but they did keep one of the assistants and Jack Capuano and goalie coach Zach Burke. I, As much as I thought the change was desperately needed, I'm surprised that the two guys that got to stick around, Jack Capian looks after the D, and of course, Zach Burke looks after the goaltending, and they've been probably arguably the two biggest issues with the team. Um, so it was surprising that they get to hang around, now, but that's not the case anymore. Zach Burke was not fired uh, as the goalie coach, but he's been reassigned to a new role, uh, and that's going to be working in the scouting department. I'm not sure exactly what he'll do, but something to do with scouting and development. And Justin Peters has been promoted from Belleville uh, to take on the NHL head coaching duties, or AHL, the NHL goalie coaching duties, not head coaching duties, uh, for the Senators. So he's done pretty good work in Belleville. Uh, he's worked with their young goalies. Their young goalies this year have been having great success. I know Matt Sogard is Probably a great testament to that. Uh, Kevin Mandelizzi, uh, leaving Carolina, they're all 
seemed to be uh, doing well under his tutelage. So it's a good positive sign. At this point, you got to think that there's a better, you know, just a fresh voice to work with the goalies and kind of pick on some of the things that aren't going well and figure out ways to get better. Um, so we'll see what happens here in terms of goaltending, but I suspect a fresh approach and some different uh, coaching techniques will be used and see if they can help the Sends goaltenders uh, play better. Of course, Anton Forsberg just got hurt uh, just past week, but Jonas Corpusalo uh, obviously could, um, like I said, I, you can't blame it all on him, but again, there's plenty of times when he'll be amazing, but then he'll let in a softy. Teams have also been noticing that he's weak on a high glove and been picking on him in that sense, and he needs to work on that for sure. So hopefully they can make some progress. Matt Sogard, of course, is up with the big club. Expected to start tomorrow. He's already used to working with Justin Peters, so it'll be an easy transition for him while he's up in the NHL. Uh, some other uh, notes from around the league, including some more roster moves. The Minnesota Wild today activated defenseman Jonas Brodeen from long-term injury reserve. So he's been out for an extended time. So they're quite happy to get him back. And we're waiting for further updates as well on Patrick Kane in Detroit. Last night's game in Toronto. Uh, he did leave after the first period uh, with due to a lower body injury and did not return. And it looks like he could be out for a little while, but we don't know exactly. All they've confirmed so far that it's nothing to do with his hip that cupped him out of action and required surgery the first chunk of the season. So we'll see what happens with Patrick Kane. Um, in Colorado. They've got news today that's um, certainly going to hurt the team, but hopefully he can um, you know, get himself better. But Val Nishushkin is going to be away from the team going into the player assistance program. Now, of course, the Avalanche lost Val Nishushkin due to some obscure reasons that we still don't know and understand uh, late last season, and now he's gone again. Of course, the player assistance program is there for a reason. Clearly, he needs you know help with something. Uh, I'm sure the team's going to be very supportive, but there's no doubt that it hurts. I mean, they're already without uh, Lekkanen as well, so that's two top six forwards now that are going to be out. When they go into the player assistance program, it's not really a clear-cut answer when they're going to be back. A lot of players, sometimes it's around 30 days or so. It depends on what kind of program they need or what exactly they're seeking help for. And obviously, hopefully, it depends if it's successful too. Um, but it's just an indefinite time, and he has to be released from the program. And the uh, counselors, or whoever he's dealing with, have to be comfortable that he's good and ready to return. So it could be 30, 40 days. It's really hard to say. Um, so you have to wonder uh, if the Avalanche will look for additional. Uh, support via trade or something. I mean, obviously, they don't have their captain, Gabe Landis Cog. lekkonen has gone. nashushkin has gone. Um, that hurts. So they're obviously in a good spot in the standings, but they don't want to, you know, end up in a spot where they go on a big losing streak or anything. So we'll see what happens. Uh, clearly, a big blow to the team, but hopefully, he'll be okay and get the assistance that's required. Um, they don't have, like, he's not taken off their cap it while he's in that program. But when he's expected to be gone for 30 days or more, because of that, then they can place the um, the LTIR option on the table. So we'll see what they do to uh, work around the salary cap. Now, lots of different uh, uh, trade rumors as well to take a look at. I want to talk about the Calgary Flames first. All kinds of players in the rumor mill there that we know of, of course. You know, Hannafin, Lindholm, Tanev. And Jacob Markstrom. I want to talk touch on a little bit further on Markstrom. Uh, he left practice today. Uh, unexpectedly and there was already some more trade talk and rumors floating around the internet about wondering what happened with them his coach called it maintenance so we don't really know anything there i don't think he'd come out and say anything anyway um but the last reports we had heard from elliot freeman on saturday night which was just two nights ago that the flames I don't think they're opposed to moving Markstrom, but they have a big asking price. And at this point, they've yet to go to him to ask him to waive his no-move clause. And that's a big ask for teams, so they're not going to do that usually unless they have a significant trade that they really want to consider taking advantage of. So in that case, Jacob Markstrom, um, you know, I don't think is looking to leave Calgary, but I think they're open to doing it. And at this rate, because he left practice, it just kind of get things stirred up again. 
but no indication that they're really all that close. Um, like I said, Friedman says that it's going to be a big asking price, and he doesn't know if they're really going to be able to do something. Maybe in the offseason, we'll see how the rest of the year goes. Not to say it won't come together before the deadline. It just seems to be a little bit more tricky, and they're not there as of yet. I know in Ottawa, a name I keep seeing pop up on a variety of trade bait boards and different reporters talking is Jacob Chikorin. Uh, at this point, I don't see there being anywhere near uh, a trade for him on the table. I mean, they've only had him not even a full year. Doesn't make sense to move him, in my opinion. Uh, Elliot Friedman today talked about the fact that with Ottawa, he says that they are talking to a lot of teams to kind of gauge what teams around the NHL think of their players. It's just research uh, more than anything to kind of confirm, okay, who basically do other teams like? What do they value? What might the market value be? Just to kind of mull over what they need to do to make changes. Will there be changes before the trade deadline? I have no doubt there will be at least some. Like I said before, I think you know pending UFAs like Kubalik and Tarasenko are much more likely to go. Uh, Friedman reconfirms again today that the Senators are nowhere near uh, ready to move any of their what they call their young core or young important players. So you're looking at you know all of your your top guys that have signed to longer term deals, whether it be you know Kachuk, Stutzel, Sanderson, um, you know uh, Batherson, Shabbat, Norris. And I would put Chikrin in that conversation if it was me. Now, he hasn't signed long-term because he came with a contract. He's not eligible yet for an extension. Um, obviously, he's going to be due a raise on that extension when he does get one, regardless of where it is. Um, personally, like I said before, I honestly think they would probably consider a move of Shabbat more than Chikrin, but we'll have to see. They have three left D that are all going to be making big money in the near future, so does it make sense to maybe move one of them, if, especially if they can get a top right D? It probably wouldn't be a bad idea to change the mix back there, but it's not a foregone conclusion by any means that Chikrin goes. Sanderson's the only one that's not going anywhere. Um, like I said, maybe it's Shabbat, maybe it's Chikrin. I don't know what they do. They've tried playing one of those lefty on their offside, and it hasn't quite worked out. But doesn't mean they can't find the right mix and figure out a way for that to happen. So we'll have to see where that goes. But at this rate, there's even though his name's out there, I according to what we heard from Friedman and my own personal opinion, I don't think there's anything to think that Chickering's going to be moved at all. Um, and in Edmonton, uh, could we see a big deal involving the Oilers and the Blue Jackets? We got a very fiery Elvis Merzlikins after the Columbus game today. Um, and he confirmed that because we knew that um, they had had a conversation between him and management about finding a more preferable you know, working arrangement for him, basically getting him a fresh start somewhere else that they were both kind of on board for seeing if they could find um, a move for him. And now that's changed. Um, that was just like in a very recently here, just in the past few days that uh, he confirmed that. And now today he said he's gone and asked for a trade. So he's confirmed that he wants out. Elvis wants to leave the building in Columbus. He wants to move on. Uh, he hadn't played since December 29th. He got to play today. He said it was very important to him that he have a good outing and take advantage of the playing time. Uh, picked up a big win, of course, which was important for him. Um, and, you know, you could tell that he was uh, fired up and really um, emotional, so to speak, which is understandable to a degree. He also went on to talk about the previous, uh, one of his previous starts there when they battled the Washington Capitals. So he says that he feels that Tom Wilson tried to intentionally injure him as well uh good talking about that um so he's just full of you know big quotes today but essentially if you take a look at elvis uh if he he believes in himself that he can be a number one uh and he's made that perfectly clear he wants to have a chance to play uh and feels like an, another situation he could really go back to being a top goaltender so clearly um you know if you look around the league and look at what teams are maybe able to accommodate a move that's why i get a lot of people talking today about the oilers jack campbell and elvis merzlikens contracts are very similar uh they both have three more years after the current season is up uh so term wise matches uh elvis makes just a little bit more than five million and um, Campbell's making five million himself, so the money is similar. The term is similar. Um, you know, Columbus is a team that's obviously looks like they may make more changes and kind of. I wouldn't be surprised to see them go down more of a even a deeper rebuild. I mean, they've got some guys that need to go for sure. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a GM change. Um, you know, but could we see? 
you know, Columbus and Edmonton swap goalies. It may not be one for one, but it, it, there is a lot of connections there that just seems like an inevitable switch could happen. Uh, Elvis could go on to work with Stuart Skinner. I mean, yes, they've been getting good goaltending out of Pickard when he's played, but do they really want a chance going into the playoffs with Skinner Pickard, you know, or would they want a more experienced goalie like Elvis Merzlikens to come in and really solidify that tandem? I mean, I know I've seen some say, well, no, Stuart Skinner needs to be the starter to hurt his development. I don't think it hurts anybody's development, myself, to have a strong tandem. And you need more than one solid goaltender going into the playoffs. I'm, you know, teams are, well, it's why the teams with three goalies that are NHL quality goalies, they don't want to part with them, right? Because they know that if they ever get to that point, that you need goalies like that because they are hard to come by. So it's certainly not a given that this trade happens, but just looking at their contracts, looking at where the teams are at, looking at what they need, it would probably be beneficial for Campbell to go to a team that's a little bit quieter market, a little under the spotlight, so to speak. Not that there's anything wrong with Columbus, but it is a quieter place to play than a Canadian market. I think we can say that for sure. You're not going to get the scrutiny in the media like you do in Canada. It probably a good place for him to kind of go and try to rejuvenate his career, so to speak. And it gives Elvis a chance to go to a new market, to a new team, somebody who in the playoff hunt, he's fired up and see if he can, uh, you know, help them win. Uh, there's no doubt. Uh, there's a lot of connections there that seem to work. So it's curious to see if this is something that will materialize or not. Uh, like I said he was full of good quotes today after the post game. And now it's not just a case of him working with management that they're open to, uh, a change of scenery he wants out and he'd like out as sooner than later so that is telling information on his part um and yeah we'll see where this goes but obviously now he's gonna be putting a little more, more pressure on them to find a trade and it's not going to be easy given his contract but this deal makes sense if you ask me let me know what you think down in the comments we'll discuss further if you're new to the channel of course make sure you subscribe and stick around we'll keep you up to date with all the news rumors and analysis of all 32 nhl teams thanks for watching and i'll catch you next time.